Hello and a very warm welcome back here to Eurovision 365. I'm Podrick, I'm your host and you, you, you and you up there are very welcome to join me as I react to all the songs taking part at the Luxembourg Song Contest 2024. And that is something I don't think any of us thought we would ever say again following the departure, the long hiatus that Luxembourg had after the 1993 contest. And this is very much worth celebrating because of course Luxembourg were one of the original nations that took part in the 1956 contest when only seven contestants of countries took part but of course they had two songs each so it's 14 songs in all but like I say this is very much worth celebrating and Luxembourg of course was announced at last year's Eurovision where um, I almost said Terry Wogan there, whoops, Roger and Slip, Graham Norton, <laughs> Irish man as well, Graham Norton, he uh, announced that there was breaking news that Luxembourg would return, and of course they are in, indeed returning to the stage in Malmo, and I am very happy to see that happen. Some people are saying that Luxembourg returning is like a new nation for them because they won't remember the last time that Luxembourg had set foot on stage in Mill Street. Now down through the years Luxembourg were known, because it's a small country, the Grand Duchy that's known for, it was known for sending performers outside of Luxembourg. We had French, we had German, we had English, we even had an Irish performer called Geraldine back in 1975 and that's her in the background here. And the composer and actual conductor for that song was one Phil Coulter who is very well known here in Ireland and there's a bit of a no link to him with Eurovision because he was part of the Eurostar competition in Ireland from 2003. It was in 2003 he was part of that and even took part commentating as well, partly commentating as well in the 2003 contest. But it's now the 2024 contest and I'm going to react to these songs coming up so let's not delay any further shall we so here they are and first up it's Angie and Raffaella with the song Drop how's this gonna sound like well there's only one way to find out let's do this so I'm pressing play this very second now this is Drop Yes. Nice. Quiet start to this song, isn't it? Put my white flag down because I'm stronger now. It's like a rising from the ashes kind of a song, isn't it? It's like an anthemic quality to the song for sure. Come on, drop. We had Drip Drop, of course, at Eurovision back in 2010. This is Drop, yes. Like I said, it's quite an empowering type of song. This is very pleasing. I'm so happy, so happy to see and hear Luxembourg are back at the contest. Look at me rubbing my hands in glee. Yes. This is my first time listening to the song actually, so I was singing along to that already, so it's like, yeah, it's catchy enough, isn't it? Drop! Oh yes. There's a bit more coming now, musically as well. Luxembourg as a country, I would imagine, is going to be feeling the pinch that there's no orchestra anymore because they used that to such success back in the 
back in the day. Yes. Oh. This is not bad effort at all, you know. Not bad at all. Drop, and there it is. That is drop indeed. So that was the first song there from Angie and Raffaella, and it was drop. And yeah, not a bad effort at all. I like that. Like I said, I'm swaying along. I was enjoying that. It's an empowering type of song, and it's one a type of song that is would can do well some years and not so well other years, just depending on what else is going to be included in the contest. And uh, yeah, very pleasing for me to hear, as I say, Luxembourg back. Just want to mention that back, you'll notice the backdrop here. This is the logo from the last time that Luxembourg hosted the contest back in 1984. Wow, so that is like 40 years, it'll be 40 years from they hosted. I'll be interested if Luxembourg wins, who knows, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so that was a song, not more to say than what I've already done, so up now what I haven't said is Podrick's rating. So my rating out of 10, based on this very first listen, is going to drop a 7. 7 out of 10, congratulations and the very best of luck to them. Let's move on now. So up next is Child with the song, I hope that's right, uh, with this song, Hold On, Hold On, Hold On, Be Strong. Shall we do this? Yes, we shall. Let's press play. So I'm pressing play this very second. Now. Says, hold on, of course. Good sign. Push knees in so we can hear me a bit more. Hmm. I get a feeling we're going to have a bit of a beat coming in here very shortly, I think. I'm waiting for the punch here. I think it's coming. I think. Okay. There's fireworks going off here as well. Oh, there's the beat now. There's the beat now, isn't it? A classic kind of Eurovision melody, is what I would say. It sounds a bit Swedish to me as well. It's like something you hear in a melody festival, and very much so. I bet you this is a Swedish song, right, isn't this? I bet you. I'm right. <laughs> Thomas Jason. Oh, there you go. There you go. Again, very. Um, Swedish like. Of course, the performers, the rules were the performers, uh, and I thought the songwriters as well had to be, have a link to Luxembourg. Be from or have a link to Luxembourg. This is like a. I don't want to be critical, it's sounding really horrible here when I say this, but it's like a Andra Johnson song. Didn't quite make it to the Melody Festival in itself. I mean, it's not awful, don't get me wrong, it's not awful. But I'm not going, whoa, this is so original! It's so hard to be original nowadays, isn't it? Yes. Dun, 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 
Like that. It's like a started bolero. <laughs> Sorry. I you all still playing pretend to play uh, violin? Oh, is that it? That is it. Oh, no, it's not. It is. It is it. I thought I was talking so much, sir. I was kind of distracted a bit. And don't get me wrong. I was listening to the song, um, even though I was doing this pretend violin thing before you say. Uh, I, I was listening to the song. I thought it was okay. Very, very Swedish-like. By the way, I love Sweden. I'm learning the language. Ja, lär mig svenska om... Två, två år. Uh, och ja, älskar svenska och Sverige. So, do you know what I mean? I love Sweden. And this is not really knocking Sweden, but this is more knocking, I suppose, the inclusion of a Swedish um, songwriting team. Because... It's tried and tested. We've heard it all these times before. So um, that being said, I do wish. I of course, of course, I wish child, child, the best of luck with the song "Hold On" at the Luxembourg Song Contest. Uh, but now it is Podrick's rating. So my rating out of ten, based on this very first listen, is. 5.5, 5.5 out of 10. That's a low score because of what I've just said before and the reference to. Um, sounds very melody festival and like but what do you think you know what to do let me know as well below your thoughts on this and all the songs I'm reacting to I love to see your comments so do let me know and I'm sure you will but now it's on to the next one let's do this so up next it's Edson and the song finally alive mm, this sounds intriguing let's hear how this goes shall we yes we shall let's press play so I'm pressing play this very second now. My past is not tomorrow. I got futures I don't know about. Past is not this tomorrow. Edson, finally alive. Let me show you something. Look up, don't look good stuff. Vibes from this melody. Luxembourg, Luxembourg, Luxembourg <laughs> have a great record at the Eurovision. They had won five times up until their departure, and on the departure, Ireland had won for the fifth time in 1983, and they equaled Luxembourg and France uh, as most winners at five at that time. So if Luxembourg comes back and wins, we'll be right up there in the leaderboard again. Disco song, just as like I said, there's a disco ball. Woo! Woo! There's nothing beats the chair dancing, right? I like the bass line there. Very groovy. Again, look at this. But Pushing this in a wee bit further so I can hear a bit better. Yeah, a nice guitar riff there as well. Oh, yes. This is one I can imagine. That action on stage, actually. That dancing around. Good Edson be on the stage behind me in Melmo. That's what they're looking for, of course. Yeah. Retro. So, so many retro sounding songs now in 2024, 2023 especially. I'm loving that. You know, I'm a retro kind of person myself. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just an aging Eurovision fan, making reaction videos, <laughs> so it's okay. <laughs> nice to time I danced around a disco ball, still do yet, you know. I call it dancing. This is one to dance to. Gospel-y feel to it as well. Inclusive. 
but I can imagine the big boy being included in this performance as well, which is a good thing. Yay, that is it. That is it. Woo! That was Edson with the song Finally Alive. And it's, uh, yeah, it's good to see. It's good to see that um, he's done so well with that. And uh, I, I like that. It's a bit more, a bit more uh, up tempo, retro, dancey kind of feel. And I did like that because of those reasons. But um, yeah, it'd be interested to see if Luxembourg sends a song like this. It's hard to know what Luxembourg was saying. It's been so long ago now. Uh, they were very much known for big, big female empowering ballads. So um, I haven't heard any of those yet so far. It's just the third one. So it's time yet, I suppose. Um, but uh, what is going to happen between now and me finding out if there is an empowering female ballad will be perfect rating. So my rating for this song is... 7 out of 10. Congratulations and the very best of luck for the Eurovision 2024 Luxembourg Song Contest. On to the next one. Shall we do this? Yes, we shall. Let's go. And coming up next is Joel Marquez with the song Believer. Am I going to be a believer of this one? Well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? Let's do this. Let's press play. So, I'm pressing play this very second, now. This is Joel Marquez. Hold on tight. Mm. Will I be ashamed after Believer. Written by Brees Lebel, Clement Moulot, and Marvin Dupre. I'm going like this. I know it. Oh, I try to fly away. I wasn't expecting that now, to be fair. Very good tune. Reminds me actually of the Austrian song in 2018. Gorgeous. I just said gorgeous there, didn't I? That was almost unconscious saying that. I'm like, I am like in this. Yeah. Just wonder how this would um, transfer onto a bigger stage in Melmo. Nowhere would stand out or not. It's hard to know what's going to stand out, isn't it, before you know all the songs, because if there's a load of up-tempo, banging songs, quite a one might just stand out very well. Mm. Which reminds me a little bit as well of River in some parts, just a little bit. Not vocally or anything like that, just a little bit melodically there. I like this. How many times have I said that? <laughs> oh, lovely high note there, but not too long, which is good. Woo! Believer. Believer. I'm a believer as well now. Oh yes, that is it. That is it. 
That was Joel Marquez with the song Believer. And I am a believer now, Joel. Joel, I uh, thought that was a really decent song, actually. That was very, very, very pleasing to my ears. Um, I think it's very pleasant. It's um, got a, He's got a great voice, hasn't he? And I'm sure he can sing as well as that live. And if he does, he may do very well at the Luxembourg Song Contest itself. And maybe even get the ticket. But again, hard for me to say because I've got not a few songs to listen to after this. But uh, yeah, I did like that. I have to say um, the quality of Joel's voice is what's selling it for me. Um, it's laid back enough, but not too laid back at the same time, if that makes sense. Um, but that being said, I, I really like that one so far. And that's what I like about making these reaction videos back to back is that it's given me a real sense. That it's, it's, it's easier for me, I suppose, to kind of compare and contrast the different songs because they are being played back to back. You know, because if you, if you do, if I make a reaction video one day and then maybe for one country and then three days later do another one for the same country, it's like, it's not that I've forgotten, but I'm not maybe comparing it as much. And maybe it's unfair to compare, but when it comes to a song contest national final, that's what people are going to do. Um, so now it is time for Podvix rating. So my rating for this song, based on my very first listen, is... 8 out of 10. Congratulations and the very best of luck, Joel, for the Luxembourg Song Contest. Of course, let me know as well your thoughts and keep them coming. I do love to read your thoughts and comments, so do let me know below your thoughts on this and the other songs taking part. And uh, yeah, let's move on to the next one, shall we? Yes, we shall. So I'm going through these rightly, aren't I? <laughs> Up next is Crick. And it's called, the song is called Drowning in the Rain. Ooh. Let's hear what this is going to be like, shall we? I think we should. Let's do this. Let's press play. So I'm pressing play this very second now. What was all about? This is Crick, drowning in the rain. <laughs> Love it. Love the lurks. Oh. Nice original lyrics so far. Nice harmonies as well. Mm. Lovely piano. Female power ballad I was talking about a few moments ago. Uh, who's written this now? Oh, there's um, Scandinavian, I think. Scandinavian songwriters with this one. Nice video as well, kind of simplistic. It's like a lyrics video, of course. But I like that timpani come in just gently. Boom. Boom. Oh, musically, melodically, this is so pretty. Now I can see that on stage in Malmo, can you? Oh, it's like a Bond kind of song, isn't it? For me anyway. For me it is. Lovely harmonies again. Oh, this... <laughs> so good. I love the lyrics as well. Yes. Lovely, again, lovely quietly, quieting down the piano and everything. Lovely. Oh, I love that. I love it. 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 Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. That was Crick. Crick. 
Crick <laughs> on the song Drowning in the Rain. And in the video, she's doing like a little heart. And the, the picture of her, she's doing like a little heart um, and with her hands. And I would do that back to Crick because that was powerful. Um, I loved everything about that. It was very Bond-esque in parts for me. Um, and kind of almost like an, an Adele track as well. Um, not vocally, but certainly song ways and sounding a bit like an Adele track and uh, that's a, I would say that's a pretty decent compliment. I think the lyrics are a little bit different, a little bit original. I mean the first couple of lines, I'd be missing cigarettes although I never smoked them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dabbled in tattoos just to awaken the emotion. Yeah, I like that. I like this origi there's a sense of originality there as well and um, as I said at the start, Luxembourg is one of those countries historically we're known for sending big female power ballads and that um, certainly goes some way to um, bringing Luxembourg that kind of style genre um, back again to a 2024 contest. Would that translate? My guess is yes it would and I can't imagine that on stage very much so and I think that's probably a good sign. Um, yeah, there's nothing more for me to say other than Podrick's rating. So my rating for the song, based on my very first listen, is 8.5. 8.5, congratulations. I give it a little bit more other than, um, or because I haven't, the reason I haven't given it more, I should say, um, get straight. The reason I haven't given it more than 8.5 is because um, I want to see it live and see what it's going to sound and look like live and that may adjust the scores for me, the rating for me but a first time listen 8.5 is a pretty decent score I would suggest So up next is Naomi Ae and the song Pour Me Sur Tour <laughs> I've got that completely wrong but uh, English means, the English translation is apparently lost on earth Ooh interesting, shall we see how this sounds? Yes, we shall. Let's press play. So I'm pressing play this very second now. This is going to be completely in French. I'm glad about that, I have to say. Nice piano here. Strings accompanying there, isn't it? My pronunciation was almost there, wasn't it? See, it scored very high on um, Eurovision World here. It's got five stars, and that's out of um, the average is four point eight stars, but it's pretty much five stars, and that's out of eight hundred thirty-four ratings. So fans are clearly loving this. Don't know if I'm loving it as much as the last one. Being honest. But what I am loving, I have to say, and I really said, was the fact it's in completely in the French language. It's amazing to think that in the earlier Eurovisions, like French was quite a dominant language. You know, and rightly so back then. It's a quiet moment here. Soudain je glisse 
Yeah. It moves along at a nice enough pace, I'm going to say that for sure. Will uh, Naomi be on the stage behind me here? I can kind of see it. The fans are down here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> But what is that is it? Um yeah, not a bad song, not a bad song at all. I um yeah, I, I like that enough to be fair. But again, as I said, it's it's good for me to listen to these songs back to back because it's nice to compare and contrast. Um I didn't like it as much as the song just before. That being said, I didn't hate it. I, I, I liked it. I liked it and my thought was pleasant. I thought it was very, very nice. It reminded me like, maybe of the Belgium entries from 2017. So not, not the same kind of um, genre of, of song, but just that kind of, it's one that could be what we, we used to call a sleeper. One that maybe could do much better at the contest than maybe others might think. But that being said, the fans clearly love it. It's got five stars there in Eurovision World. Um, I liked it, um, but I do, of course, wish uh, Naomi the very best of luck for the Luxembourg Song Contest. But now, coming up, it is Podrick's rating. So, my rating out of 10, based on this very first list, is 7 out of 10. Congratulations, Naomi, and I wish you the best of luck. And, uh, yeah, let's move on to the next one. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So coming up next, it's uh, One Last Time with the song Devil in the Detail. This is the second last reaction for the Luxembourg Song Contest. It's not the last one, it's the second last one. Um, shall we hear this is going to sound? Yes, we shall. Let's go, you and I. Let's press play. So I'm pressing play this very second. Now. Devil in the detail. Yeah, I think there's um, some partly Scandinavian songwriter team behind this as well. Alban Freddy Lundqvist, Lundqvist, uh, Jonas Holtberg Jensen, and uh, Bruce Oriab Smith. Bit more for a rock, soft rock, maybe. Rock, kind of a sound, yeah. Don't want pie in the sky. <laughs> Where have we heard that before? You, you can keep your lousy moon. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Sick. Nice enough rock song. Maybe something that we've heard before, perhaps. I'm saying perhaps we have heard this type of song before. That's not a knock, it's just a comment. Yes, indeed. Is there any? Yeah, not so much to be honest with you. I mean, I like the look of this group. I think they look pretty cool to me. Uh, one last time. 
One last time, of course, was the name of the Swedish group, who I love, lo loved, absolutely love from uh, Den Vilda. It was a song from the 1996 contest. I love that my favourite Swedish song of all time. One more time, they're called One More Time. What am I thinking? Yeah, that's it over. Yeah, that's it over. Um, pleasant enough rock song. We've heard it before. That's okay, um, but I don't know if it would stand out enough at the Luxembourg Song Contest, but you never know, it's a bit different to everything else that's gone before, i.e. it's a bit more of a rock song, whereas the others aren't really. Um, so that may go for it, uh, a favourite for it. Um, but yeah, it's got four stars out of five on Eurovision World. Uh, now it's time for my rating. So it is Podrick's rating. So my rating out of 10 based on this very first lesson is let me say 5 out of 10 5 out of 10 that's what it is I know it's a low score but I do wish them the very best of luck if you disagree that's okay let me know in the comments below your thoughts I look forward as always to reading them but yeah let's move on to the last the last song how did we get to this point well it's because we've listened to them so here comes the last song to react to so up next, and finally, it's Tally with the song Fighter. Is this the best one? Have they saved the best one to last? Well, we shall see. There's only one way to find out, isn't there? Let's press play. So I'm pressing play this very second now. This is Tali and Fater. Mm -hmm. Sounds typically French for me. I know it's in French, but melodically. Oh, yes. So it tunes into English for the chorus, it seems. Yeah, just looking at the lyrics here. Pre mix of French and English. I like the note. Oh, there's a lot going on, isn't it? It's like a French song. It's been like a sort of Balkanish sound as well coming through for me. A bit of accordion and part as well, which is very, very nice, very, very pleasing. Songwriter Swiss is Anna Zimmer, Manon Romiti, and Silvio Lisbon. Yes! You know you're a fighter again. Empowering, empowering seems to be the theme running through a lot of these national finals that I've heard so far. Empowerment anth anthems. Reminds me of another song from your vision. Yeah, the Turkish song of 1989. There's a lot going on. I know I've said that already. Maybe too much? I don't know. Yeah, hey, no, there. Yeah, it's got good, it's got another good vibe to it as well. Nice vibe, fun, kind of fun, but at the same time empowering. So, the seriousness to it as well. Not this part though, that's not serious. That's fun. Staging's going to keep this one. Et voila. Et voila. It is voila indeed, because that's the last song. That's the last song. The last song of all of these songs taking part at the Luxembourg Song Contest 2024. Yeah, did we end on the best one? I don't know. I don't know. Don't know what we did, but certainly that was a pleasant enough song at the same time. 
Um, yeah, so that was um, Tally with the song Fater. Uh, Tally has a bright big smile on the picture here um, on, on the Luxembourg National Final um, postcard. And I I like it. I like it as, as pleasant as I say. It reminds me of a few other songs actually. It's kind of like a mishmash of different songs, different styles. Uh, obviously a mix of French and English um, and I just wonder if there might be I, I was pondering this wasn't I really when I was listening I just wonder if there's a bit too much going on um, to keep our attention the whole time but maybe that's the whole idea to keep our attention is like throw lots of different things at us which is definitely not a bad thing um, I just wonder how that if it does one how that would come across at a Luxembourg for Luxembourg at Malmo um, of course time will tell where it's chosen or not and where it does um, I'm trying to picture it on on the stage of Malmo as I'm speaking about that and I suppose I'm thinking it'd be fun I mean it's an immersive stage so a lot of the fans of course would be loving Luxembourg no matter what they send <laughs> let's be honest because we're glad to see them back um, but that's not to discredit anyone that does go of course but yeah, it's not bad, not bad at all, but it is time for my last rating of the Luxembourg songs. It is Podrick's rating! So, my rating out of 10, yes, on this very first listen, is 7.5. 7.5 out of 10. Congratulations and the very best of luck. Of course, let me know what you think. I love to read your comments, I really do. So do let me know below what you think what you think about all things Luxembourg at the Eurovision in general and these songs that we've just listened to. I look forward as always to reading your comments and of course thank you for joining me in this mammoth, this long marathon of an episode. If you've been here from the beginning to the end, well, thanks very much for doing that and uh, yeah, fair play to you. Uh, thanks for doing that and I hope to see you in the next video. But until then, you take care and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.